I use the air advice a little bit differently than a traditional HVAC company. How do I get my ROI and value out of it? I was explaining to Jay earlier that when I was establishing relationships with HVAC partners that I liked, that I wanted to work with, I'd seen their work in the field and I gave them copies of my air advice reports that I was taking saying, Hey, what would one of these look like in front of one of your customer's hands? And what if the person giving it to them is doing it for informational purposes and they're not trying to sell them? It's, I'm going to gather the data and get good information to provide and we can review it together and I'll give you the best recommendations and advice that I can based on your home and what it needs. From there, you got to circle back with your HVAC contractor. If you don't have someone, I, I know some great people and I'd like to pass along their information to you and put you on an email. And from there, it's just an introduction. Let them take over. But it's worked very well for me because so I'll, d- I'll dive a little bit into my business model now. I've got a little bit of notes that I've taken down. But we work hand in hand with HVAC contractors with only a little bit of overlap. And that overlap is more we'll swap out flex stucks if we're at a home and we do our inspection, we find a tear in one or we tear one or something happens that it's got to get replaced. I'm not going to pay an HVAC company to come out and replace it. But I'm also not typically installing dehumidifiers or air quality products that I'm recommending. I'm identifying the need for them and providing that third party validation to their customer base saying, here's what we measured in your home. Then this is something that you'll really want to explore and have a discussion with your HVAC provider about possibly a dilution system, a ventilating dehumidifier or a filtration system. And I just cater the recommendations based on the findings, but I don't sell them. So I don't, it's nice for their customers because I don't, it doesn't come across pushy. I'm just like. This is an informational, like I'm getting you the data and the information you need to make the right decision for your family and your home, but I'm not going to get a dollar out of it directly, I guess. Indirectly, I'd raise my prices to amortize the cost of the subscription of the unit over, it only ended up taking me about four months to completely recover the the initial cost of the monitor and the first year subscription. But the nice thing with that is by raising my price, wasn't going to give a dollar figure, but I did. I was going to ask anyway. Percentage. So I raised my price 8.3%, which basically it, it was somewhere between 25 and 75 bucks per system. Took me about little under four months to recover that. And I only do one house a day. So I, I don't like having my attention divided on, I got to rush so I can get to my next appointment or I'm going to be late because then it takes away from quality. So I don't do that. I just say, I, I'm going to do one house today and do it very well. And if I know that it's only a one system house and I'll have a couple hours left over in the afternoon, I might schedule a dryer. But I don't schedule like two different homes for duct cleanings in a day. That's awesome. Um, so it's, I'd think other companies would recover their costs much, much faster than my business model really permits for me because I'm seeing between one and two people a day max. <laughs> Unless it's raining or something's going on that kind of prompts us to reschedule a house cleaning to that day. And you've recovered your cost, you said, in four months. Is that Was that in your first year with Air Advice? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was in my first year. And that was just from increasing my base rate. I really recovered it a lot faster than that. But I figured if I see 
somewhere around 25 to 30 customers a month on average. Roughly 20 working days, roughly 30 people working five days a week. Then for me to get across 75 to 100 people and raise my price by a certain dollar amount, that 8.3%, just amortizing it over those few months and then having a higher base price for the rest of the year, increasing my profit margin all year long. And because that it didn't change my bottom line cost of doing business, like the air advice, it, it's a, I pay it once and then I pay it once a year, but it doesn't take me more than five minutes to plug it in, walk away from it, come back, unplug it, put it back in its case and have it ready for the next home, open up and review the report five to 10 minutes. So it doesn't really add to my labor costs. But the extra 8.3% on every system we do adds pretty much directly to my bottom line. After that, the annual subscription fee for, for the cellular coverage and recalibration and all that stuff. So that's awesome. I don't want to get away from the, the value that you're bringing to the customer. Like you said, for an extra $75, you're providing a critical insight, valuable yeah. from a valuable, trustworthy authority on the subject. And that's worth the money. It's, I'm sure there's probably, people will probably pay a lot more for that. Once they get that information, if you were to ask them what the value was, and you told them it was yeah. like 25 to $75, they'd probably laugh. Each year I do about two to three like multi-day reports that I'll drop the air monitor off, leave it there for three, five or seven days. And uh, each time I do those, I'll charge a couple hundred dollars. But I wasn't using that in my budget for recovering the cost of the monitor. I'm going to take the, I don't know, 2000 and I'm going to split that across a hundred customers. No, I need to make an extra 25 per system or per customer on average. And then I wasn't worried about the cost because then after that, every single system and customer after that, and well, my bottom line just increased 25 bucks, 25 bucks, 50 bucks, depending on the home. Some homes I might make 200 extra bucks doing the same amount of work, more or less, other than plugging the monitor in. So that really help grow our profit. Like our revenue growth was good, but the profitability was great because I took out my advertising costs. Any of those, I, I don't spend anything other than my air advice and my BNI membership. And yeah, BNI is the choice. The air advice is it's just a critical piece of the equation. And it's a major closing tool for me. I, I'll have customers call me all the time. You, you guys are a hundred bucks more than the next guy. What? Why is that? And I'm like, I'm not going to speak about another company. I don't know their business model. And I, I can't say anything about their pricing structure. What I can share is that maybe one of the reasons we cost more is because we are truly invested in you or, or our clients and their families' health and well-being. And then get an example of that is we have an air monitor that we use on every single job. Like part of our service and it's not going anywhere. Could I send you a copy of the report that it generates? That closes more, like more phone calls for me than almost anything else. My close ratio went from, I think, 56% to 86%. Like, it was a big job for just sending people a text message of a sample report or an email of a sample report. And then no one else had it. I was like, hey, our service is based on data. You try to really know what's going on and then measure so that we understand 
but I can at least know that the solutions that I provide are quantifiable and they're real. And it's built a great reputation for us. So yeah, I, I'd say increasing our base price and increasing our closing ratio are two of the most significant contributing factors of the air advice in our business model.